Hey, guys. It's the Friendship Table. We're nearing the end of this thing. We've got... What is it? Three, four episodes left? Before we're yep. done with this season? Four episodes left. Three if you count the two-parter. Three episodes left. Both Fields and McColts, the main attraction, and the cutie remark. It, it's... It's absolutely crazy that we've nearly made it, but we're talking this week. What about Discord? Yeah, what about them? A... <laughs> what about him? He's the best character in the show, and you bow down to his greatness. Oh, you must be under his spell. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, this, this episode was filled with funny. If you it have, just was filled with so much funny. If you haven't figured it out yet, I am Nirvana Sparkle. Greetings, humans. He is Dragonheart. And... I am Dragonheart, the Rainbow Defender, and I can introduce myself. <laughs> the Rainbow Defender. <laughs> yes, and yes, and as always, Twitch is American Choir Boy. Our friend Aaron joins us. This episode to the fandom has mixed reaction. No. I gave it a four, based on the notion that Discord is always kind of funny, role reversal was kind of nice, and, but the big thing I noted was, it was Twilight acting very pre alicorn status, very classic. Took a step backwards, didn't she? But in a good way. In a in a good a way to say that the character hasn't changed at all. It, now it, direct all people all people that actually hate Twilight when she got the wings, I direct you to this episode. Watch it. One hundred percent. And tell me that it is not the same character. I mean but we don't see the side of Twilight very often anymore. This kind of lovable dork. Which... Cynical. Very cynical. Very cynical, lovable dork. She hasn't... She hasn't been this character in a very long time. The last time she was like this really was feeling pinky keen. Wow. Or too many pinky pies if you want a more too many pinky pies recent example. I mean, this version of Twilight we don't see very often and it was refreshing, but We'll get the Twilight in a bit because this is a Discord episode. And he steals the whole show, like every episode that he's in. He he steals the whole show. And that can be for better or worse, but Choir Boy, your immediate thoughts first. Well, I like that you said uh you know, mixed reactions, or for better or for worse, because I'm kind of on the end that says, uh, I, I didn't like this episode a whole lot. It had its, had its pros and cons. There were some funny moments in it. Ultimately, though, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed with Discord as a character. I think um, he could be... Oh, how do I put it? He, he could be so much better of a character than... Uh, you know, it's been too long since his reform to still be doing, like, he's still manipulative and too cunning against his own friends. And it was just, it's just becoming kind of a, you know, he needs to change from this attitude because he's still, like, looming over Twilight. He's still just in general being kind of mean in his, uh, approach to trying to be a good friend he's, he's he, he hasn't changed all and it was just but then again twilight doesn't do any better she um 
reverted back to a very cynical kind of, you know, assuming pony who just really took it too far. And, uh, and yeah, there was a few disappointing aspects in that. But overall, it was kind of funny. And the lesson does hold somewhat. It's a D's kind of lesson. Um, but yeah, that's that's mostly what I think off the cuff. I mean, in terms of Twilight's attitude, it's very appropriate. Why? Because you never really know what Discord is up to until he pulls it on you. Right. He always has. He always has. There's always a method to his madness. That he is fully aware of. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a little too much, and it's the same as it's always been. We need to move away from that for Discord. There's too many times he's been, you know, like, redeemed, or like, you know, oh, let's forgive him for his, you know, <laughs> stupid crap. Because there was a little bit of character development in this when he felt remorse for what he did, which that's not usually the came old on a little Discord too fast. feel remorseful at all. Well, yeah, but he, that that lesson came on a little too quick at the end there. But yeah, they had that. And really, it's only Discord that brings out this attitude in Twy because she has to be the cynical kind of low key kind of bitchy just to keep up with Discord's shenanigans <laughs> the fact up. that the whole thing the whole thing in this episode uh, because here's the brilliance of this episode they utilize the whole thing they utilize discord's mischievous nature to the point where they have him constantly nag twy over and over and over and over again until she finally cracks they don't he doesn't like forcefully try to make her crack he he goes he plays into her rules until until the point where she gets where she doesn't find she keeps not finding any evidence to pin anything on anybody. So she gets so frustrated. And you see that, that right at the beginning. Cracks. You see it right at the beginning when he goes, you know, see you later, Twilight. It's like ah, oh, it's like see, here we go, here we go again. That's what I thought. It's, and here's the big thing: if it's trying to pull a I made reference to The Hangover in the review where you get this event that obviously Discord and the other five were involved in, but you don't learn of the event. You have been completely disconnected of the actual event. And it's through the recounts or the semi-recounts that you're explaining this event, but you're never really told what the event is. So you're in about as much in the dark as Twilight is. That's the entire setup. The reason why the setup fails, though, is that this sudden friendship between Discord and the other... Four, I'm taking out Fluttershy from this, is way too convenient of a troll. Plus there's, plus, there's no evidence that it was actually a genuine friendship, so it's kind of hard to take the gen. It's kind of hard to take the generosity uh, as uh, genuine because there's little to no build up. There's really no information on how they became friends. Usually they would give some, if you're going to do this right, then at least you have, you have to give at least some information. Not to give away what what the whole joke was, the whole moments, what they were doing there, but you have to give some information on how they became friends, on how they related to each other. And, and the way that Twilight handled it, though, was in her typical style way. She kind of handled it kind of feeling Pinky Keen style in the sense of how she approached it. So she approached it in character and approached it properly. 
with with science. But but the whole idea that nobody was giving her a quote unquote fishing line and kind of helping her along, it made the whole thing of come on, guys, you're. Not trolling, but you're trolling. Because you're not really helping her understand that she missed it. And she should be okay with missing it. Because, because here's the... Here's the thing about it. They give her, they give her and the audience barely next to no information. They don't throw them a bone. They, assen they, they essentially tell us to figure it out, and they don't throw us a bone first. If they had thrown us a bone first and had something for us to go on, at least given us an idea of what the situation was so that we can leave. not necessarily tell us outright, but give us some information on... Have us paint a picture, make an architect of the picture, and let us color in the picture ourselves. Yeah. So that would have been much better. But in terms didn't do that. In terms of Discord's jokes, they were funny as ever. I mean Bob Ross. Rest in peace. I mean Oh yeah. That that was kinda like Yeah, that was two uh, horns in there. Uh, I, that was funny. Uh, that was funny and I don't think anyone can disagree. And something that I picked up the uh, another Brony analyzer, but I didn't catch originally is every one of the costumes that Discord was wearing in the episode was a reference to a previous character that he's played elsewhere. There's a reference to his character in, uh, what is it, a video game known as uh, Quantum Containment. There's a reference to his guest starring role in Breaking Bad. There's another pseudo reference. So it's a bunch of little John Delancey references within the reference. I mean Yeah, and the only reason they did Bob Ross is because they did because he's popular and they wanted to take a little crack at Disney. I mean or PBS in this case, not necessarily PBS, yeah, but PBS is owned by Disney, so technically they're taking a crack at Disney. Well PBS is owned by no one. It's public broadcasting, David. <laughs> It's owned by each individual state. But, I mean, the episode had its very funny moments. It's all Discord episodes will do. And nice appearance by Zakura. What, have you gone missing, Zebra? Yeah, it's nice to see. It's nice to see Zakora. I was happy to see Zakora in this episode. What? I think she's one of the most underutilized characters. I was about to say we're gonna have to put her face on a milk carton. <laughs> she's been gone for a season and a quarter, and it was nice to uh, see her do something. And I mean, the lesson was always obviously a good one. About sometimes you're going to miss things and you got to allow your friends to have their kind of own individual moments without you. But I think the lesson was kind of telling to what the show has been doing with Twilight as a character for the past year and a half. How they've tried not to have her involved in everything like she was in seasons one and two where she was practically involved in some yes. notion in just about everything. And they and they wouldn't just do Twilight. They would also try to there would also a stigma in season one and two where they would purposely try to fit all of the main well, six on that screen. Was more season three, not one and two. Season Oh three. well well still season. season three they did they tried to they got the stigma 
oh, we have to fit all six of the main six on screen as much as possible, which, no, you don't. They may be the main characters, but you don't have to fit them all on screen at once, 24, as much as possible. And that the argument they naturally had at the end third was a natural argument. But again, I'm going to stake my hoof in the sand and say Twilight was not in the wrong in this episode. It was completely on Discord and the rest of them. And it's funny how karma came back around. But at yeah, and that's, that's the thing about it that yeah. makes this episode really brilliant, is that the Nick Cofone, I think that's the guy who wrote this episode, I'm not too sure, uh, he basically wrote it so that, yeah, somebody's going to get karma. Discord is going to get his karma, and everything is going to come back around and hit, hit and bite him on the ass, because he's being a dick to Twilight purposely throughout this episode. Yeah. He's aware of what he's doing, and he's enjoying Twilight's misery. And he would have gotten away with it, too, if he would have not opened his mouth and said something about it. If he would have... Yeah, but that was, that was what makes it brilliant, you know, is because that's something Discord would do, is brag about it. Yeah, so Discord was perfectly in character here, but... I gave it a four to wrap things up. So, David, starting with you, where do you place it on the scale? I, I gave it a five out of six, and that's only be. And the purpose of that is is because yes, the the one fact I mentioned previously, they don't throw them a bone, and that if they did, and they if they gave us a picture frame. It basically gave us an idea of what the picture should look like and let us fill it in instead of not throwing us a phone and letting us and letting us figure it out without giving us any kind of information, then it would have been a six out of six. But just because of something like that, which is not little at all, it's something that would have affected the episode as a whole, that's why I gave it a five out of six. But other than that, it is a great and entertaining episode based a lot of it based solely on the fact that Discord is such an entertaining character, and the fact that Twilight and him are so well written. I mean, so we get to you, Aaron. Where would you score it? Right around three point five. It's pretty funny, but I, uh, I just thought it was a little uh, odd the way they they played this off to supposedly teach Twilight a lesson. Um, I just, I thought that was kind of all over the place and it didn't go too far for me. I don't know. I just didn't think it was a great lesson overall. I mean, kind of there, but you know, not, it wasn't horrible, but right around 3.5. All right. So next week it's Hatfields and McCulls. It's a Fluttershy. We're going down to the south. It's a Fluttershy Twilight episode. Which Twilight episode makes me gleam with waifu joy. But. Yeah, and I just imagine Fluttershy in the middle of a whole bunch of muskets. Just, just, just. She says hi and just a whole bunch of, of rednecks come out of the bushes and aim muskets at her. Yes. People, we're going there. Hasbro, Hasbro might get slightly racist tomorrow, just slightly. But we'll be yes, here. Yes, let's hope for hope to please Hasbro. Do not let this episode be be bad because people are gonna are gonna start. Do not go stereotypical. First off, with the whole little Jimmy's caught in that damn well and all kinds of. Stereotypical redneck X shit. Yeah, but until next week where we talk about it, I'm Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana and thanks for watching. I'm Dragonheart and have a heart attack possibly. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We will see you next week and make sure to rate comment
favorite, and most importantly, hit that sub button. We need a hundred by the end of this year. That's my goal.